All the work that you did, just did, was not for naught, okay? It, it's still going to relate to this because with U substitution, what you have to do is you've got to pick out, well, what is my, what we're getting ready to call U. So you've got to figure out when you look at these functions, which part has a derivative that shows up in the problem, okay? So in this case, this part right here, and usually it's what's being raised to an exponent, or when there's trig involved, usually it's the trig function, or what's inside the trig function, okay? That's going to be what we call our u. So over here to the side, we're going to say u is equal to 5x cubed plus 72. Now we're going to take the derivative of that expression. So du over dx, we're taking it with respect to x, is equal to 15x squared. And what we're going to do with this, hopefully, what we got right here is in our problem. Well, we've got 10x squared in our problem. That's 15x squared. So anything that's not in our problem, we're going to move to the other side. So to move that 15, that's got to be 1 over 15. And then we want the variables to be on the same sides. So the dx goes to the side with the x, just by multiplication. Okay. We're moving the 15 over, dividing slash multiplying by fraction. Okay, so the 115 on the other side, the dx needs to be on the right side with the x squared, so we multiply by dx. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to substitute. x squared dx is equal to 1 over 15 du, so that's going to go into our problem up here. Now, any constants in front, like this 10, you know by our rules of integrals that we can just put that in front of our integral. And actually, hang on, I'm going to put the 1 over 15 in front of my integral too. Okay, so the 10 moved in front. My x squared dx got replaced by the 1 over 15 du. Okay, x squared dx was equal to... 1 over 15 du from this part right here, from my u substitution part. Are we okay? Alright. See? Okay. I don't want to go any further if y'all are confused at this point. Um, yeah, technically you can look at it that way. It's more like, I mean, it, it's 1 over 15 du is equal to x squared dx. So x squared dx gets replaced. I'm just putting them in separate places because the 1 over 15 is a constant, so I'm going to put it in front. The du always goes on the end. I'm not finished yet. So my 5x cubed plus 72 was my u. That's to the seventh power. Okay, so what I've done is I've changed my variables. I've changed my variables. So that now I have something that I can integrate just using the power rule. Okay, so 10 over 15 reduces to, those are both the factor of 5 reduces to 2 thirds. The antiderivative of u to the 7th is u to the 8th over 8 plus c. Two-thirds times one-eighth is one-twelfth, because two over eight leaves us with four, three times four is twelve. My u was five x cubed plus seventy-two, that's to the eighth power, plus sixteen. Magic happened, that's the antiderivative. And we can check it. You can always check your integration by taking the derivative. It takes like 30 seconds. 1 12 times 8. Chain rule, keep the inside the same. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of a constant is 0. 
8 times 15 is 120. 1 12th of 120 is 10. The x squared moves to the front. There is what we just integrated. And that's fine. If that works for you, that works for you. But see, I learned it this way, so I was like, I, I messed it up trying to just figure it out off the top of my head. Which one? Like when it gets to seven? So what they're wanting you to see, what they're wanting you to see is what do I take the derivative of to get what I'm looking at in the interval? Okay, so we like number six. How do we, what do we take the derivative of to get secant squared? Well, we take the derivative of tangent to get secant squared, and we know that when we take the derivative of a trig function, the inside stays the same. So that's where the 4x plus 1 comes from. And then we take the derivative of the inside, the derivative of 4x plus 1 is 4. Okay, so that, that's why they, they have the two columns here, because they're wanting you to connect the chain rule to the fact that integration is the opposite of taking the derivative. So if you can think about what do I need to take the derivative of to get what I'm looking at in that integral, that's where I start. What do I take the derivative of to get what I'm looking at in the integral? Um, So let's look at number seven. If we had done number seven with integration instead of what they did with the right 14 as a factor of six, that sort of thing, um, let, let's look at how we would have done that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's look at number seven. Number seven is the integral of 14 times 3x to the 4th plus 2x squared to the 5th times 12x cubed plus 4x dx. So when I look at that, I've got to figure out, okay, which part is my u? So which part of this has its derivative embedded in the problem? Well, the answer to that question is this part right here, if I took the derivative of that, it's going to give me the 12x cubed plus 4x. So I'm going to say, all right, u is 3x to the 4th plus 2x squared. When I take the derivative of that with respect to x, I get 12x cubed plus 4x. That is right here in my problem. So I don't have to move anything on this one other than technically I need to move the dx over to make it mathematically sound. So I'm going to replace this part of my problem. It is equal to du. So I move the 14 in front. The 3x to the 4th plus 2x squared is my u. That's to the 5th. And then that whole last part there is equal to du. So now I integrate. u to the fifth is u to the sixth over six plus c. 14 over six reduces to seven over three. Plug my u back in. Okay. That's where the 7 over 3 comes from. You feel okay?